Hi guys, welcome to Genomics with Georgia. I'm a bioinformatician and I work in research and I have this channel to help you guys understand the kind of bare minimum things you need to be doing to actually transition from having some basic bioinformatics skills to actually being employable in the bioinformatics world. On today's episode, I'm going to be briefly telling you all about what is a README and specifically what is Markdown and why do you need to know it as a bioinformatician? One of the main things that's going to set you apart from someone that is not getting the job and someone that is going to get the job is if you understand the importance of reproducibility and readable code. And one of the really key things that you need to be able to do in bioinformatics is to document what you're doing effectively. The way that we do this generally in bioinformatics and coding is in Markdown. So Markdown is essentially a language, and don't worry, it's really not too complicated, but it's a language that we use to write documentation about the code that we have written. This is so, so important because if your code isn't very readable and people don't know what it's doing, they're less likely to use it. You're gonna create technical debt for the people that come after you and it's just going to make you less nice to work with if people can't read what you're doing. So let's have a discussion about how you can use Markdown as a bioinformatician. Firstly, there are a bunch of really helpful articles that I will list below on kind of the syntax of Markdown. But essentially, you have a text file and the extension for Markdown is .md. So like in Python, we have .py for a Python file um, and a text file is .txt. The extension for a Markdown file is .md for Markdown. And this is a file of code that when rendered is going to show you a nice, um, kind of processed version where you have things in nice bold, things in headers, things italicized, things in tables, etc. And it just makes a really nice description of what you've done. So make sure that you have a look at the different markdown syntaxes that you can use. But essentially the main things are you can create headers, you can create tables, you can create code snippets to like have your code as separate and legible. You can do lots of really nice things. So make sure you always just have a look at the good things to do. So now we have an idea of what Markdown is. How might you use it, might you ask? So let's dive into the reasons or the applications of Markdown in bioinformatics. So application number one is in a README file. So whenever you've written a bunch of code, it's very good practice to have your code in a repository on GitHub. And when you have your code in a repository, it's very common that on the landing page, you would have a readme.md file. And this file in GitHub is then automatically rendered at the bottom on the landing page of the repository as the nice little markdown file that you have written. And that readme is going to explain to whoever's come to your repository what to do to run your code or a description of what your code's doing. It's going to be a really nice introduction to the user and explain to them what this repository is all about. Sometimes it might have a scientific rationale, it might have a, a schema inserted of what the pipeline might be doing, um, but the bare components is it will have a recipe. So a recipe I've mentioned before is essentially instructions of how to run this code yourself. So it might have a description of how to clone the repository, change into the directory, how to run the pipeline. You might have a section about what all the parameters mean, but essentially the readme is a very, very lengthy, articulate description of everything that the user needs to know to run that code. So it's the main reason why you need to be able to write in Markdown in order to really help people understand all the hard work you've done in your code. Second of all, we use Markdown when we're writing in our Jupyter notebooks. So Jupyter notebooks are the kind of bread and butter of kind of exploratory analysis, really showing someone the process of your data science work. And we can have Markdown in our Jupyter notebooks and you can select. So you have your cells in Jupyter and you can have a code cell or you can change a cell to be a Markdown cell. So this means you can put headers 
and subheadings in between your blocks of code. You can insert pictures that might be helpful and it essentially allows you to explain what you're doing as you go through the notebook. So Markdown is very important for this And as well. thirdly, you also use Markdown in R. So I'm not a big R coder, but um, R Markdown is also used as well. So it's not just a Python thing. If you're working in R, writing a Markdown file is also very key in that space as well so that you can explain what you have done in your code. So I hope that was really helpful. Make sure that you learn Markdown because it's the way that you're gonna make your code more readable and it's gonna make you a good bioinformatician. If you've liked this channel, remember to subscribe and I'll see you again on another video.